Greetings, Zoombots. Uh, Tony Skinjui here with hopefully one of the last videos uh, of the beta that I'll be doing for Disney Sorcerer's Arena. Now, uh, I believe this patch 10.0 review is going to be the last major patch before global launch, and I could be wrong, uh, and then I'll just do another one of these videos. But I want to kind of assess the changes that have happened here uh, from where they were, so we have a kind of a record of what happened before and what's going to happen when we get to launch. And a lot of this is speculation, a lot of this is uh, knowledge from the industry, but let's just kind of take a look. So patch 10.0 has made a couple of changes. The first change patch 10.0 did that's immediately noticeable is the Tower of Endurance. Instead of being one tower that you can complete one time and repeat every day for about 20,000 tower credits, uh, it is now multiple towers uh, divided among different classes and classifications. So you can check the first tower is pretty wide open. The second tower requires downtown characters, kingdom and oceanic, downtown and wilds characters, and of course all affinities or pretty much all different types are required at different stages. Now I've been able to get pretty much this far with my Kingdom and Oceanic because I haven't really been working on making a wide roster. What I will say is the tower system is different and we'll, we'll talk about why. Now that there's different towers, it appears as though the most important thing you can do is clear all the way to the end or you start falling back or falling behind in your resources for this mode. Now, check real quick, we go to the Tower of Endurance store or exchange and we'll see what's changed the first thing is uh, there's no characters anymore they've removed characters completely uh, and in their stead they've added spell packs now I purchased all the spell packs but the spell packs pretty much have four drops based on which tower you've completed uh, of the tower specific character tokens for example zap mortal potion magic meteor uh, peanut trigger do Kaboom, some of these are random, uh, as well as Sugar Rush, uh, Cauldron, and uh, Headless Horseman off the top of my head. But pretty much all of the spells that aren't event exclusive are now easily farmable from this store. The plus side is now that there's no characters in this store, the item costs have gone down a fair amount, especially when it comes to early stage brooms and tier four and of course tier five materials all in all pretty decent uh, there's this new item called pigments pigments are used to level up spells and just for an example i'll show you that real quick uh, it no longer takes the ability material the ability runes that characters take and now has its own unique currency and while that's pretty good because you don't have to farm one currency and then decide if you want to level up a spell to see if it's much better or if you want to use it on a character or a, for a team. Uh, it's a little bit of a minus because now there's a brand new currency that's just been introduced that's you now have to farm up from scratch. Now, for global players, this is probably not going to be noticeable. You're going to see... Uh, it all at once, so you're just going to have to farm all this currency up. But for players who played in the beta, it's a little bit of a mixed feeling. So uh, overall, I think the tower change has been positive. I like the idea that the exchange is now specific to spells, and uh, you don't have to worry about making a decision regarding do I farm character pieces or do I farm spells. You have a store specifically designed for spells. Spells are important, but not so important that you're going to uh, break your back unlocking them. That said, uh, to each their own. I, I like the changes overall. I just wish that when you complete a previous tower, you can, if you're a VIP, of course, or even if you're not, you can go back and clear them again. That's something I did appreciate the most out of the previous tower exchange where with, as a VIP, you can sim the tower all the way up, or as a regular player, you can just do the tower every day. Once you've beaten it once, you can probably beat it again. That's kind of the rule. So I'm a little, uh, not only upset, but a little underwhelmed about the idea that 
because I can't pass this tower, I'm stuck at getting seven or eight until I invest specifically in Oceanic and Kingdom characters. That said, uh, anything that incentivizes you to work on multiple characters I think is a positive because it gives you a rounded roster. Overall, positive change as far as I'm concerned. The second major noticeable change that I've come across is uh, visible when you go into a battle uh, or on the character screen itself. They've changed a little bit of the art style. So you may not notice much of a difference regarding the character's pictures here, but once you go ahead and click on a character, let's take Shan Yu, uh, they've added a ton of shading to the characters to give them a more three-dimensional feel. Again, for the global players, if you're watching this video a couple months down the road, you'll say, hmm, these characters look cool. Uh, it's a little bit different. They, uh, We saw them, they were more of a flattened 2D on a 3D atmosphere. Now they are very 3D. It hasn't uh, affected anything as far as gameplay is concerned. It's an overall positive change. It makes the characters look more fresh and vibrant, but it is a noticeable difference as far as uh, appearance of the game and how characters uh, are visible. And I'll do a quick fight at the end to show you. The only other thing I've noticed is the addition of new characters. And instead of just going through each individual one, what I'm gonna do is show you the hero's campaign uh, from the beginning to the end. So you have a record of what was available early and what became available as time progressed. Now, the nodes themselves have not changed too much as far as the early game nodes. These have also stayed roughly the same. However, Oogie Boogie has been added as a farmable character. He was previously unfarmable, uh, so he is, I don't remember who he replaced. I'd have to check on that. But now uh, the access to not only Oogie Boogie, but the entire Nightmare Before Christmas team uh, has been made available on node farming. Still not necessarily the best place to get materials, but any farmable character is better than a character that's not farmable, no matter how difficult it is to get them. Uh, as far as the rest of the campaign, no new characters have been added. Uh, they've all pretty, pretty standard across the line. And uh, that's the hero's campaign. As the villain's campaign, obviously the hero's campaign unlocks villains that you can use to clear the villain's campaign, which unlocks more heroes. It's designed to be a symbiotic relationship where the you progress in one so you can access characters to progress in the other, etc. Uh, a couple of notes regarding the villains campaign. The early stages, again, have made no changes. These characters are not particularly farmable right now. That might change when Global Launch and some of these characters may receive a rework. Uh, it's always a good thing to note that Ariel and Tinkerbell are Oceanic characters, uh, as is Maui, and Maui is probably going to need them, so just keep that in mind. Uh, an early stage access is Sally. Sally was previously unfarmable. Again, I don't remember who was here prior to this, uh, but ultimately it was a hero character. Now Sally and Jack are made available to farm here. Uh, in addition to Elastigirl, she is one of one characters currently available in the game. The other one is Frozone, and I'm sorry, Syndrome is a villain, but Frozone is the other character available. We can't unlock him as of right now, but Elastigirl is now farmable. She is not uh, in exciting. She is actually one of the few characters that doesn't have a passive. I assume that she will be getting reworked around the time of global launch. Keep me posted on that. Darkwing Duck uh, has become farmable relatively early. Pocahontas. Uh, I believe she was always farmable. I think she was farmable a little bit later. So she's been moved up. And moving to the end, we see the only no Jack Skellington is available, uh, as well as kind of a recap of these characters that I believe were just recently added as farmable characters to the nodes. Then we have the last but not least, the Grand Campaign. Grand Campaign uh, has added Oogie Boogie, basically all the Nightmare Before Christmas characters, another way to farm Jack Skellington. Uh, as you probably know, and I'll just scroll back to the beginning, uh, nothing changed in the early stages. A bunch of characters you're probably not going to farm with a handful of characters you might, based on events that are coming out. So. As you may already know, the Grand Campaign is the best place to farm characters as there is no limit. However, their drop rates are RNG, so sometimes worse than others, I guess is the best way to describe it. Uh, the 
other change that's been made regarding campaigns, and I guess I'll do that fight I told you about earlier, is in PvP Arena. Uh, not only does it continue to have season rewards, and the season rewards are roughly the same, if I recall correctly. Yes, well, they're about the same. Nothing's changed here. They've additionally added weekly rewards, and based on how high you get once you reach Platinum 3, you will basically be getting a free pack uh, of Robin Hood. So it's it's pretty decent. It's, it's another way to get additional gold coins and a couple of more Robin Hood characters. Now, I believe that these characters, uh, these season characters are going to cycle. I don't believe it'll always be Robin Hood, uh, as I don't believe it always has been Robin Hood. But it's nice to know that if you progress, uh, you are starting to get additional rewards. Uh, that's always a positive thing. More rewards for the same amount of work is great. Uh, it's when you start getting less rewards for more work, that's when there become issues. And I'll just go ahead and do a fight. And hopefully I'll win, because I'm going to keep this, regardless of if I win or lose. But let's take a quick look at what the updated graphics have done for the gameplay. I'm going to cut. Still a little slow. Nothing, they haven't changed this. They temporarily, they enabled speed up. It caused a little bit of issues. They're working on it. So nothing terrible happening there, but it's always important to keep track of what they're working on. You can see that the animations have not deviated too much. Uh, especially from previous videos you've watched of mine where I'm showcasing them, or other streamers, or content creators, rather. So, you can just get a pretty decent idea. And of course, I am using a Downtown Villains team, one of my favorite teams. Uh, also, a team that I will recommend. And if you stay tuned, uh, you will see videos regarding teams I recommend for early players, new players, and who to focus on and when. Now I'll just take her out of the fight. Then I will take him out of the fight. For those who don't know, Zerg is an event-specific character uh, who requires downtown villains to unlock. So another good reason to work on them, as well as the fact that they are a pretty good all-around team when it comes to PvE content and PvP content. As you can tell, even though I'm playing a robot, make one of these even though i'm playing a robot i'm still pretty capable of beating him with no real fear so i think the graphics change has been great i think the store changes have been pretty good uh, i think that the campaign addition of characters and i think that's going to continue to happen i think uh by the time this game goes live i think you're going to see even more characters available i think you might see very few characters with multiple uh, nodes to farm in either heroes or villains i think the grand campaign is where you're going to get extra character farm availability and i think you're going to start seeing separations uh, again this is just coming from a player uh, of many mobile games as well as a uh, game developer in this industry for about 10 years I believe what you're going to see the most of is character scarcity or availability going to specific things. Like villains are always going to be in the heroes campaign. Uh, heroes are always going to be in the villains campaign. But I think grand campaign is going to be a little bit more keyed in on high impact characters, characters that are very important in the same way that certain stores have exclusivity like Hades, Shan Yu, Mordu, Merlin, and now the Horn King, who was previously available in the Tower Exchange. Um, you can always get five of the exclusives. It takes you about, I believe, 53 to 56 days to unlock and max out any of these characters the second you reach rank 200 in Arena, so just kind of keep that number in mind. Uh, and you do get four of a pretty standard issue. Very infrequently do these ever change, but again, Unless you are about to unlock the character uh, or you're, you know, a couple of shards away, 
I would make sure you use this currency specifically on the exclusive since it's the only way to get them outside of shards. Oh, one last thing. If you are interested in spending money and buying the VIP package, which I believe to be pretty good value, you gain access to a specific store called the VIP store. Now, the VIP store seems to be on a five-day cooldown that you cannot refresh, unlike the other stores, uh, where you can refresh for a price of cores. And this store has um, a bunch of strange materials. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I have mixed feelings about this. As a person who's willing to spend money in a game, I think it's great, because if I do want to pick up a costume off season because this event usually comes for players who have a pass holder or if you don't pay for a pass holder uh, elite pass you still will get shards towards them it just takes three or more passes to finally get the character costume costumes are completely cosmetic i don't think that there's an issue with charging any amount for them because they don't improve the quality of a character they just make them look different the same thing with yzma's uh lab coat so i don't have a problem with that i do have a little bit of issues with things like jesse tokens um hades tokens davy jones specifically and runes being available for either core oh, i'm sorry gems or gold and it's that i like a separation of free to play casual spending uh well you know and there's i have a whole video series feel free to check it out i'll link it here regarding the classification of spenders, uh, even though it's for a different game, it, it doesn't really change. And I like the idea that if people want to spend money, they are encouraged to, and the value they get uh, is great. But I don't like the idea of there being such a low bar of spending to value that a free-to-play player, someone who either can't or refuses to spend money, is outclassed. For example, I think that there's a price point offer of about $5 that you really have to be careful with what you offer from that $5. Um, but that's kind of a personal conversation. I'll have a different time. You can always stop by my stream and ask me about uh, whether you think an offer is worth buying or whether you think it's, you know, if you're never spent before and you really want to and you like a character, whether that's worth it, feel free to ask me or ask me in the comments below. So I'm a, I'm a bit of mixed minds. While I can see the benefit to a player like me, I can also see an issue to free-to-play players that won't have access to this store. And I think that the fact that there's access to the store gated behind a physical paywall, regardless of what's in the store, eh, leaves me with a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth, but we'll see. Uh, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think, if you've played or if you're super interested in DSA. Comment below, let me know. Uh, when this game does go global, you will start seeing a lot more videos for this game from me. I just don't want to make too much into beta, afraid that something might change and make my previous videos obsolete. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.